How's it going everyone and welcome to Coffee Ring Tales. Today's tragic story is of Rochki de Beer by E. N. Marais. So, sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let me tell you a story. An old man from the Free State with the name of Herman de Beer, of no relation to Rachel, before the first annexation by the English, had bought a farm in the Drakensberg Mountains between Transvaal and Natal probably the coldest part of inhabited South Africa. The cold was the most significant and most detrimental danger that the inhabitants had to endure. Every winter, snow fell and powerful winds would suddenly blow that would mean death to any living creature caught in the open. Animals would even freeze to death during the day if caught in the open in the fields. One winter, a young man with his family arrived at Mr. Herman de Beer's farm from the Free State. He was looking for land in the Transvaal and had some cattle and sheep. His family, a wife and two children, a boy of around five or six, and a daughter, Rachel, of twelve. Mr. Hammond de Beer permitted them to move into an empty Hartebeer's house on his property until they had a chance to look for a property of their own. No more than a few weeks had passed since their arrival before a terrible tragedy struck the poor family. A terrible storm came from the southeast one early afternoon. Dark clouds came rolling over the mountain tops with winds like sharp steel cutting through everybody's clothing. The livestock had to be taken to shelter as soon as possible. Everyone on the land, including Mr. Herman, was hastily carrying the lambs into the house and chasing the cattle into the kraal. The young Mr. De Beer was poor. He only had around 20 heads of cattle and a few sheep. One can imagine that he and his wife were uneasy about the storm that night. Every animal on his small piece of borrowed land had to be protected. As he chased his cattle into the kraal, he noticed one of the young cows had calved in the field and returned home without it. The cattle were not grazing far from the house, but they did move over a considerable distance, and to find the cattle, they would have to trace the route the cattle took to find it. There was no time to lose. Nightfall was not far off. Everyone that could search had to go out. Rachel was a diligent young girl and was always helping her father with his farming. She grew up with the cattle and could handle them well even cattle herding. They decided that her father and Busman would search the far side of the field while Rachel searched the area close to the house. Just before she left to search, her little brother insisted on going with her. It was already bitterly cold, but the children had been raised by the hard school of life and their mother could not see why he could not accompany her. It was close by. They would not be gone for long. She tied a sheepskin hide around his neck and they went on their way. It was dark when the father and Busman returned home, but Rachel and her brother had not yet returned. The storm was like a wounded lion, nearly impossible to walk straight against the wind, and the snow fell like nails from the dark sky. The alarm was raised immediately, and a large fire was made from dung and wood by their mother. The father, Mr. Herman, and everyone in the area searched for them with lanterns and wrapped in blankets and animal skins. They searched through the terrible night, shouting and firing off guns in the hope that the children would hear them, but there was no sign of them. The storm died down by daybreak. The wind calmed down and the snow had stopped. Their grief-stricken mother went out to search as well. There was little hope of finding them in everyone's hearts. Where would one have hidden from the cold on the open mountaintops? The only chance, slight as it was, was that the children had taken refuge in the hole of an artvark. One of the workers found faint tracks of the children just after sunrise. After a short while, he shouted out that he had found them. Everyone hurried to him, and this is what they saw. A large anthill that was recently dug out with a rock, just like you would make an oven in the field. The anthill might have been hollowed out before the children found it, so that Rachel only had to enlarge it. Rachel often made ovens like this for her mother. In front of the opening lay Rachel, her back to the mouth of the oven so that it would be sealed. She was completely naked, with only her shoes on her feet without socks. She was dead, her body as white as snow. Inside the oven is her brother, frozen stiff but still alive. He was dressed in Rachel's clothes. Her dress, undergown, and overshirt pulled over his own. Around his legs, her sheepskin hide. 
Have you ever felt cold? Cold so great that it feels like it's cutting your skin. So cold you can feel your jaw and limbs go numb, as if the hand of death itself was closing around you. Imagine then, for a moment, what these two children went through. It was already dark. Rachel carrying her brother to the anthill as the track shows. Piece by piece, she added her clothes to his to keep him warm. First her dress, then her undergown. Her hat tied tightly around his head and over his ears. She probably kept her wool undershirt on to dig out the oven, her arms and hands numb from the cold. But she pushed herself to finish. Finally, the hole was large enough. It's pitch dark. Her little brother complaining about the cold. It broke her heart to hear her beloved brother. She took off the wool undershirt with great difficulty and pulled over her brother with even more. She places him in the oven and the sheepskin hide gets wrapped around his legs and feet. Then she lay down in front of the mouth of the oven. For hours she suffered a slow and painful death. Who knows? Maybe some grace softened her passing. And that was the story of Rochki de Beer by Ian Marie. Can you imagine going through that? Just goes to show you what we would do to save the ones we love. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and share your thoughts. If not, hit the dislike and let me know where I can improve. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.